The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're joining us. Uh, welcome to this week's uh, Webinar Wednesday um, installment. My name is Jameson Reynolds. I'm the Director of Marketing Strategy with the Library Corporation. Uh, today's session is titled Curbside and Other Workflows for Library Services During a Pandemic. This session is going to be brought to us by TLC's Customer Success Manager, Melissa Powell. Melissa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jamison. Um, as Jamison said, I'm Melissa Powell, and I'm the Customer Success Manager for the Library.Solution side of TLC. Um, I'd like to introduce, start this one out with a poll. Um, just a real quick little poll for um, our customers or for our attendees just to see what you are doing. Are you offering curbside services or not? Or are you just thinking about it right now? So if we can get some people to answer those, that would be great. And then we'll get started. So yeah, you don't have to be offering just real quick. Yes, no, thinking about it. I'm not gonna be quizzing you on it later. And then also um, throughout this, I would really like it if you could share your advice, questions, or ideas, or anything like that in the chat as we go along, um, because this is not just about um, answering, you know, me telling you what we've discovered, but also you telling us and others on this webinar what you've been doing or what you've discovered while doing all of this. So. Okay, oh, it looks like we got quite a few people that are doing curbside services and a few that are thinking about it, but a majority are doing it. Okay, perfect. Well, let's just start out with a little bit of a review. March 2020, COVID-19 came to call. There's our little Mr. Covey right there. Um, and what that did was all of a sudden, libraries and businesses were closing. Everybody began the mad scramble to figure out what in the world we were gonna be doing during a lockdown and still be helping our customers. And so not just libraries closing, all the businesses were closing. And the same thing that you guys were dealing with, we were dealing with at TLC as well and as other companies were. You know, a really quick shift in staffing and, and while we were trying to figure out where everybody was and while we were learning to work in a virtual environment, that is our most recent all hands meeting. Yes, we all cram onto one screen. We were also learning to live with uncertainty. And throughout all of this, we had to figure out how to keep working as well and keep supporting our customers. And so as you were doing that in the library, as we were doing this, supporting you doing that in the library. So we responded by sharing information to our customers through our community site, as well as our corporate website. Um, we did webinars and we do blogs and all of that. And in fact, for the LS customers that are on this webinar, we will be doing a specific curbside for LS customers web um, webinar. So keep an eye on that in the community. So we'll be taking you through the specifics of how to do all the things we talk about today with library.solution. We also had added catalogers for our e-bibliophile service because libraries were going digital buying, using up their book budgets to buy all the digital materials they could find. And so we wanted to make sure that we had all of the MARC records there. So when you guys came knocking saying, hey, I need to get this cataloged, we had that MARC record for you in eBibliophile. And also the fact that we are a web-based software, we were able to help our customers continue working, continue not only doing services for the com their community, but doing backroom things like um, inventories and database cleanup and things like that in cataloging because they could do it from their own workstation from home. Last week I sent out a survey to our customers in LS community asking them if they were doing curbside and if they were what they were doing and what advice they might have. The many were very willing to share their advice and workflows so a lot of thanks to them and it was very interesting to also hear the stories of what they were doing. It just reiterates that there's amazing libraries out there and, and you're all doing amazing things under incredible circumstances. So thank you for that. But the main theme running through their advice was if you're gonna do curbside or any change in your service, keep it simple. 
You can always change it later, but start out keeping it simple. Remember, it's going to be new for everybody. Everything is new for everybody at this point. So the more simple that you keep it, the easier it is for your staff and your public. And you want to make sure you have a plan and you want to be able to modify that plan because things are going to shift, things are going to change. And after the last three months, we should all be pretty used to that right now that every day you wake up and go, okay, what's open today? What's closed today? What are we doing? So just remember that. And that's the world we're all living in. So be very open to all of that. And another one, thing that people kept reiterating was the flexibility with our patrons. You may be waiving fines, extending due dates. Uh, and one person just said, do it. That was her advice. She said it was great. Everybody loves it. Just do it. So to start your plan, where do you start? Well, one thing would be what will you going to allow to be checked out? So the main thing is, is you're going to want to consider your staff, not just the workflows, not just the time, but also their health. How often do you want them handling items and how much time do you want them spent with those items? So, you know, take into consideration things like the kits and puzzles and things that need extra cleaning. Do you really want to be checking those out and checking them in? Especially since another theme that was rolling through every one that I've talked to you about curbside is the fact that when they first started that curbside, no matter whether it was in March or if it was in May or just last week, the first week was slammed. Number one, you're doing this for the first time and getting it out. The patrons are coming for the first time. It was a nightmare for a lot of people, but they made it. They made it through. However, be ready for that. So maybe keeping it simple and just saying, you know, we're just going to do books for a week or two. And then as things start to kind of mellow, maybe add your DVDs and Blu-rays and some other things. But knowing when you set your plan this is not going to stay the same it can move forward it can um, change as you go through so just remember that and also we're trying the whole reason we're doing this is trying to limit contact with items and people so the other part to this is okay you've determined what materials you're checking out how long do you want them to be checked out the reason for this is you got to kind of consider, all right, if people are being told not to travel a lot, then do we really want the DVDs that they're checking out to only be out for seven days and the book they're checking out to be out for three weeks? Or do we want to just go ahead and say, you know what, let's just do everything for three weeks. It's going to standardize it for people. They're not going to be running back and forth unnecessarily. Also, you consider your community locations, the transportation options, everything. And again, this is going to be in flux as well. You may have to pull back again and say, look, we're not going to do as much. So, you know, um, we're going to be changing these rules again. So anything that you do, make sure you keep really well kept notes because you're going to maybe have to do it over and over again. And eventually as things shift, you're going to have to change some things that you had, um, you have to put back some things that you had changed. And you don't want to be going, okay, now what did we do? What did we do? So just take notes on everything. So you've decided what they're going to check out, you've decided how long people can check things out for. The next thing you need to figure out is, okay, how are we going to have them request items? Well, obviously, you know, Leverage.Solution, we offer a very simple workflow through the pack for setting holds. Patrons can set them, they can cancel them, they can do all kinds of different things with them. Um, so you do that. However, not everybody has that same access. So you're going to get a lot of people who may phone you or maybe they email. Um, so you need to be prepared for people answering phones as well as everything else. You also need to be very clear to the patron of, you know, what is, you know, how long it's going to take. Like you order from Best Buy to pick up at the store, it tells you to wait four hours or someplace else it says to wait 24 hours. So be very clear and very upfront as to how long you think it's going to be for that request fulfillment. Then you need to go in and change any notices for holds, if you don't allow holds on available items, that sort of thing. Think about all the different um, tendrils throughout your ILS that um, you'll need to check in with and change information on so that this works very smoothly. Now, another thing, some people have their buildings are partially open and they're offering both inside hold pickup and curbside. So one thing we've come up with it for Library.Solution is creating a curbside pickup location 
for tracking the stats of how many things you have done on curbside. Also, so that when the person places the hold, they can make that choice. And when that hold is processed, you as a staff member will know, okay, they're picking this up curbside. The note says they're supposed to call, schedule, whatever you need to have done. So that's another option, people who are doing both. So when you're doing, um, you've got the requests coming in, how do you want staff to handle it? Because this means if you haven't had staff in the building, you're going to be bringing them in. And yeah, you've done holds before, but you're going to get holds in numbers you probably have never seen before. So you want to decide, you know, what's the process, printing reports, and still maintaining that minimal contact, social distancing, making sure your staff is safe as well as once you are handing it off to the patron. So the philosophy that I think will help people when you're creating these workflows and deciding your rules and all of that is staff and patron contact versus your strict rule and your time and ease versus your strict policy. You're not gonna be able to just run the curbside services or even your partially open building exactly the way you ran your library before. I am a librarian, I've been on policy, I've written policy procedures, and I know how what sticklers we can be for that. This is one of those moments where you kind of have to take a look and go, okay, we're trying to keep it simple, we're trying to keep it easy, and we're trying to keep it safe. So consider that when you are doing all of the different workflows, when you're gonna have people coming in to work, how you're gonna have them checking things in and out, all of that. And then once you've determined all your workflows, then you need to figure out how are our patrons gonna pick up the items that we have now pulled for them. Um, and one thing I didn't mention on the last one was the uh, packaging. Um, most of our customers that I talked to were using paper bags. They were just putting them in a paper bag and having them out there for somebody to handle and that way you don't have to worry about having a cloth bag or something else to um, wash or anything like that so they're either rubber banding them or putting them in a paper bag with the name on them so when you do have the patrons coming to pick them up you need to determine how you're going to do this again you really need to look at the ease of the process the less steps and the less contact is better. Um, so you're going to determine, all right, what's the best for you? Are you going to have everybody come to the door? Or are you going to go to them? That sort of thing. And then you're going to also want to do a run through. I think that was the best advice I got from several librarians is look, once you figure everything out, do a run through, do a do a shakedown cruise, kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. It's like, oh, we might need to put a you know, sign over here, or maybe we should mark out six feet. Maybe we should move this table back. Just run through that thing. If you do decide that you aren't going to check items out to people prior, um, consider that, you know, do you really want to be dealing with new technology and all of that while you're trying to do all of this? So I think majority of people are just checking all the items out ahead of time. But if you really feel that you've got to check and make sure you're giving it to the right person, Figure out a process for checking the IDs or the library cards without having to handle them. Um, that way you're reducing that contact. Um, let's see, okay. So once you've determined all of that, as far as those logistics, those materials are gonna be coming back. And a lot of libraries have not been even taking returns at this point. So you're gonna kinda of have to figure out, okay, if we're gonna really open up and start letting items out, we got to figure out how we're going to handle them coming back in. So you're trying to determine, all right, is it the book drop? You know, which ones we're going to use? We want to have internal, we want to have external. Do we want to um, have people, one, one library that I was talking to, she has they, their meeting room. They had the people coming in, putting their books down on a table and then going out a different direction. And then the staff would take the stacks of books and go check them in and then put them in quarantine. So it just really depends on the size of your community, the size of your library, and the space that you have in your library. Um, and again, the same philosophy applies here. Ease and minimal contact. Really just making sure that however you determine to do this is going to make it so it's simple for your library staff, simple for your patrons, 
and again, minimal contact. Now, you've gone through all your points, you've figured out your logistics of everything, you're getting ready to start curbside service, you've run, done your run through, you gotta figure out your equipment, you gotta figure out your supplies. Now, I know a lot of people were talking, oh, we're gonna be on the curb, we're gonna have you know, our tablet out there, we're gonna have a receipt printer, we're gonna check things out. Again, I bring you back to simple, easy, less contact. If it turns out that that is the best way for you, that's great. Library.solution works on the iPad. Now, the thing is, make sure you know how to run your software on your iPad or your tablet or anything like that, because again, you're introducing new technology and you know what happens when the technology goes down. Make sure you can support it. So a lot of the, in fact, all of the librarians I talked to that are our customers have said they're using their regular workstations within the library. They're um, maybe adding some laptops and scanners so they can have people, sep you know, much more separate. Um, but they're still doing it inside the library. They're not taking anything with them out into the parking lot or onto the curb. Um, they're processing everything inside and then handing it over. Um, you know, in addition to the equipment, you know, tables, carts, shelves, however you've determined you're going to be passing these things along, you know, paper bags, you devise the paper bags. Um, some people are even doing like their vestibule, they have a table, the person calls, they bring the item out, put it on the table, they go back inside, the person comes, picks it up and goes. You've probably done this yourself, picking up groceries or things from Joanne Fabrics or anything like that. And most people have been doing that sort of thing. So learn from other people as well. Another thing you need to make uh, consideration for are PPEs. You need to have gloves and masks. Now, I know a lot of us have gotten nuts making the wonderful little fabric masks, and they're really cute, and they work really, really well. However, when you wear a fabric mask for a long period of time, it becomes damp. Once it becomes damp, you need to change that mask because you are now spreading if you have the virus, you're now spreading the virus. So you need to take that off, put it in a secure container, get another mask and go. So a lot of workplaces are supplying surgical masks. They're relatively inexpensive. You can order them. Libraries are considered essential services after medical and health professionals. You can get these. So you might consider just having that because then they're disposable. You don't have to worry about it. And they're um, even more secure than a fabric mask. And then make sure you have a lot of hand soap and sanitizer. So then the last point, you've got everything you need. People, you understand how people are gonna place their holds, how they're gonna pick them, all of that. How are you gonna let people know that you're ready for curbside service? Well, this is where having really good marketing comes in handy. And the fact that we are in a state of flux at this moment means our marketing is gonna be very different as well. We're going to be doing a lot online. We're going to be doing a lot. We're going to continue doing things digitally. So it might be an opportunity to get a third party um, marketing service. Um, one that we like is Patron Point. It works directly with our system. You can use your own library.solution customers, can use the database of borrowers and just create bulk emails, things like that. So that might be something to consider because you're going to be doing this a lot. Um, you're going to want to look at all the different ways you can update the different agencies you can work with you want to talk to the local government websites maybe they'll post it with along with the rules and the more that your city town um, village wherever you are the more they understand what you are doing as a library the more they can support what you are doing as a library um, and you're also going to be rather dependent on them as far as you know what are their rules and how you're going to work within their rules so there's multiple reasons for that and signage, signage, signage. I know librarians love it, but a lot of signage out of the parking lot will go a long way. Okay, at this point, I'm going to push out another poll for you guys. Um, and this one is about quarantining items. Um, so I want to see of the people that are in this webinar, if you are um, quarantining items, how long you're doing it, or how if you aren't how long you think you should be doing or what you're planning on doing. Because there is a lot of information out there and I'm just really curious as to what the majority of librarians are doing because we've gotten 
starting in March all the way through now, we've been getting different, you know, well, it's this long or this short or this one's doing this, or maybe it's a week, maybe it's 24 hours. We don't know. So, and after you've done that, again, if you've got any questions or ideas or anything to share, if you want to put that in the chat, um, we'll make sure we get to that and share those. So it looks like, okay. Uh, we got some, I have no ideas, but as I look at that, I see that a majority of people have 72 hours, which is pretty much right. Um, except for the fact that we don't know. So if you want to be on the safe side, 72 hours is what people say. Again, we're still learning about the conditional efficacy of SARS-CoV-2, which means how long it stays on an item and yet can, and can still infect you. Um, so 24 hours probably will be fine. Um, 48 hours would cover it. A week's a little too long, um, but it's completely up to you. 72 hours seems to be for now, while we're still learning about the virus, a really good medium point. Now, for those who may not have um, heard about it, there's something called the Realm Project, and it's the Reopening Archives, Libraries, and Museums. It's a COVID-19 research project being done by a um, scientific company, by a lab, and their specialty is um, decontaminating items. So they're really big. They understand what it takes. And so what they are doing is they have taken all of the materials that you will find in a library, books, magazines, DVDs, Blu-rays, you name it, and they are exposing or they're putting, they're actually putting the virus on those items. And unlike the initial studies where it was in a perfect lab conditions, which don't exist anywhere except a lab, um, or maybe my sister's kitchen, but perfect conditions isn't going to give you the reality. So this, this study is actually going to give us the re real world. How long will this book, if it's been sneezed on, how long will it still have the virus on it? And at what point is it no longer infectious? Because those are two different things. It can still have virus on it, but it may not still be able to infect you. So let's keep an eye on that project. I really, I'm probably going to do, um, once the results are out, I'm really hoping to do another webinar just about that. So, because it'll give us better information about how much of our stacks we can open up, how much limitation we don't do or don't need, if we do need to continue quarantining, how long. So there'll be a lot more information. Um, and then there's that logistics of the quarantining, and that's where you make that decision we talked about before. You're going to check them in prior, you're going to wait for after. Um, and I know some librarians said that their patrons were getting confused and going, why is this still on my card? Well, you know, it's 72 hours in quarantine and then we check them in. Um, so making sure your messaging tells people that, that this will take a while or like library.solution customers can use what's called the check-in line. And that allows you to check in an item. It will no longer be on the patron's account. It'll be in limbo, basically a little holding pattern. And then at the end of the days that be like three days, if that's what you determine, it will then show up as available in the catalog and you can reshelve it. So there's a lot to do with how to quarantine um, and, you know, changing locations, figuring out where you're going to put them. You're going to, you know, when you're going to check them in, what room you can stick them in. It, it's a whole lot of stuff to look at. Um, and you really need to have that all in place before you start taking those returns. Um, just had uh, in our meeting, they just said that one of our customers on the Carl side has 133,000 items that were returned. So you really need to have something in place. They, of course, brought these laundry carts and they've just been pouring them in there and going. No matter what you do, again, keeping it simple, less contact, um, and then also making sure it's obvious what day those are were put in there, what day they're ready to be shelved or checked in or whatever. Just continue to be communicating constantly, constantly. So no matter who's there, who walks in, they know what's going on. So my final thoughts, basically, you need to create a plan. You need to practice that plan. You need to be flexible about that plan. And then 
a couple of parting words from our community was look for ways to say yes, not no. And be cheerful because people are doing the best they can. We're all in this. We're all in the same boat. We're all dealing with new things. So let's just try to keep as much of a positive attitude as possible. And just be safe and take care of your customers and each other. So that's my presentation. And if there are any questions, <laughs> it's a lot of information. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Melissa. We do have some questions that are coming in. Uh, so we will go through and answer the questions or the comments that have come in thus far. And I would highly recommend if you are an attendee and you have any other questions, please go ahead and put those in while we go through this. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at these. Can I create curbside pickup in LS2 preferences, or do I have to put in a ticket for that to be created? Um, what we're suggesting at this point is to put in a ticket and we'll get that location set up for you. And then you can do the rest in preferences for that location. And we will take you through that process. Okay. Uh, we have actually a comment, which is a really very good comment as well. Um, to piggyback off what you were saying, curbside service during inclement weather should be considered and planned for as well. Yes. Some people have got those little tents so they can actually do the deliveries and not get everything soaking wet. <laughs> okay. Um, and I will say these questions do seem to be uh, specific to uh, Library Dot Solution LS. So I will say, I think some of these answers you're gonna get are pretty specific to LS. If you are using a different library management system, or Carl, these may not be completely applicable for what you're using, uh, but hopefully these will uh, answer some questions. Uh, Melissa, can I do courtesy for fines? Example, items 21 days, fine courtesy, an extra three days. You know, that's a really good question. I am not sure, and so I'm going to take that with probably back to our support people um, and get a definite answer for you on that one. Okay. Uh, how many staff members are needed to offer this service? That is a very good question, and that is completely up to you because I'm going to read one thing that um, was a good way to start it. One of our customers said that our director prior to opening did a staff-wide meeting and asked, what are you afraid of and what concerns do you have? So then he listed, put things in place, everyone got to address their concerns and then do the service. So by starting out with everybody talking and saying, okay, what are your expectations? What are your concerns? What are our goals? And then working from there um, and determining how much you think you can handle, it, it may change. It just really depends on what systems you have put in place. But I think starting with, okay, go minimal, start with the staff that you think you need and be prepared to add, take away, whatever, just the flexibility. Okay, the next two comments and questions, we're sharing a uh, brainwave here. So I'm <laughs> gonna read both of these at the same time. Cool. When you, well, maybe not exactly at the same time, I will have to stagger them, but <laughs> when you check in prior to quarantine, what are libraries doing about holds that are triggered? The next comment was, or next question was, does the check-in lag still allow it to be placed on hold even though it is in quarantine and we can't access it to fill the hole. Well, the first one, yes, it does. In our system, it does trigger a hold. And the suggested workflow for that is you go in, you change the messaging for the patron on the hold that says, this will be available in 72 hours or whatever length of time your um, lag is for. Just by being very upfront, I think a lot of people are used to that now. Um, so big, making your messaging and changing all your messaging in there. As far as I am not absolutely positive on the um, ability, you may still be able to put a hold on the item while it is in lag. It's just, it's not available on the shelf. So that's another one that I'll have Jameson shoot to me and I'll, I'll check with the experts. Okay. I know lots of systems, and this is my own uh, conjecture and feedback here. I know lots <laughs> of systems do handle check-in lag differently and how they handle mm -hmm. their check-in period, especially right. with triggering with holds. It's been my experience of what I've seen is many, many libraries who already weren't fine free um, have gone fine free because yes. of this period that we're in right yes. now. So if they follow that with um, signage, 
you were talking about signage in your presentation. When you talk about signage and marketing, and make sure customers know that they will not be fined, even if it is still yes. showing on their account. You could always yes. quarantine prior to the check-in, and then you avoid the whole getting triggered. Yeah, but a lot of people are doing that, and that was something that people mentioned. It was a really good time for them, and we've had other customers who put in requests and tickets saying, hey, we want to go find free now, just permanently. So, hey, again, okay. ease. <laughs> Absolutely. And I will say not to discount the next question that came in, but it was also um, kind of piggybacking on what we were just talking about, only they use the term reserved. I do know yeah. holds and reserves, depending on your system, are two entirely different things, um, right. but it would be the same process that we're talking about right now. Uh, someone asked, what is everyone's item limit? What are you finding? Are you finding any uh, commonality? Are you finding anyone changing their item, their checkout item limit? You know, I did not ask that actually, but that was one of my points in that I put on the list was, you know, do you want to change item limits? So that's actually a really good question um, that if anybody who's on here has a limit, go ahead and, and put that in there. And I will actually make sure I ask that in my next survey. I will say the next question, I don't believe we can answer, but I do want to make sure it gets it to do. Yeah. Is there a supplier for paper bags as we currently use plastic? Um, there are. Um, I looked on, there's actually several of the state libraries have lists of different vendors for libraries. Um, and I know, I believe it's the, oh, I can't remember which library it is, but check with your state library or check with other state libraries because a lot of them have been listing vendors like that for PPEs, for bags, for paper, for all of that. Okay. Um, how do we check in? I believe this is also holds and check ins are quite the uh, are quite the yeah. popular topic <laughs> on the session, right? Um, how do we check in items before putting in quarantine if they have a hold on? Okay, we've already we've already talked about that yeah. one. I think what you need to also understand is as long as you're communicating things, you're not charging fines. People should be. I mean, you're going to get the person who's not going to be patient. Most people, if you've been very upfront with things may take longer than normal, then I think you're going to have no problems. If you just say, hey, you got to understand we have to quarantine for the safety of our staff. Just go with that and then it's not really going to matter. Uh, what is the status you spoke about that takes items off patrons accounts but doesn't show them as ready for checkout? How do we do that with TLC? Uh, that, if you're talking about library.solution, that is the check-in lag, um, and you can go into preferences. Um, like I said, we will be doing a webinar on this, and we'll also put out uh, a blog post on community to go through the steps on that. Melissa, if I'm not mistaken, when something has a check-in lag period that has been checked in, in the public access catalog, it actually shows a shelving, correct? Yeah, I believe that is the term that it uses. It's either shelving or something else like that to show that it's not on the shelf, but it's also not checked out. Okay. And again, the last question that we have so far, um, and again, I say so far in case anybody else is currently typing, uh, do we, and we've already kind of addressed this, do we give the patron a shorter, longer, same window of time um, to pick up items? And again, like Melissa said, this is you, you determine what works yeah. best for you and your community in this environment. Yeah, everything. This is your opportunity to really create your own community oriented patron facing rules and what you feel will work for your patrons. So it's a really good chance for your customer service side to really shine. All right. Could we avoid allowing a hold on an item by setting up a curbside location and checking in items there so they would be in transit between locations? This is very specific, sorry. Let me read this wow. again. Could we avoid yeah. allowing a hold on an item by setting up a curbside location and checking in items there so they would be in transit between locations and not fill a hold until we check them in at the actual home location upon the end of the quarantine? Uh, it really depends on a lot of um, factors because if they're already, if somebody puts down the location as curbside, that they're going to pick it up, that could be an issue. Um, this is the kind of thing to experiment with, and it's a really good idea. So if you would like, anybody who's an LS customer um, and has these specific questions, I'm writing them down, and I would love to be able to answer them to you directly as well as to everyone else, just give me an email. Uh, it's mpowell at tlcdelivers.com. 
Um, and I would be happy to research these and find the specific answers for you. These are some good ideas. All right. Let me go on from there. They're due. Someone made the comment that their library is allowing item limits of 99, which is normal. Oh. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. I think it just depends on what you can handle and how much work you want to do setting it up. Is there a way to add a message to due date slips, such as note instructing where to return? I do not know that. I believe there. I can't, I don't remember if there's a way to put a message. There must be, we allow people to do messages everywhere else, but I will add, find that one as well. I should have had one of our lovely support staff on the webinar to answer a lot of these. <laughs> and what's funny too, Melissa, is the former workflow consult, uh, consultant in me is now focused on that long question about how to handle branches. I know, and I, know. I can't and wait I'm to trying get to I'm trying to monitor these questions and I'm thinking, that, like, <laughs> that actually would, I think that would work. I think that, would work. that makes a lot of sense. I do too. Uh, I want to get in the sandbox and try it. <laughs> okay. Can also potentially use suspend holds feature to pause those holds little more work on the staff to do individually. See, and that's the thing. You want to really determine, is it work worth all that work? Or is it better to say, look, you're going to get a trigger on this hold. They're going to call. You say, look, we have to put it in quarantine. If you have that show up, you could actually have that show up in the pack where they place the hold. They could show up on there where they receive it, all of the different things like that. And these are some of the workflows that I'm currently working on with all of our crack staff. And we're going to be making sure these are published on the community site to help you with those. Um, but I think just maintaining it being simple and yes, they're going to get a notice as long as that notice says it's going to be 72 hours and you've got it on your website and you've got it everywhere else. Then, and like I said, people are, they may get upset, but not for very long. All right. Okay, I will say we did get um, a, co a comment in, and this might actually be the way we end this session. Uh, someone keyed in. Uh, thank you, TLC, for all of your support during this time. We appreciate you. Ah, uh, thank thank you. you. Go ahead, Melissa. The floor is yours. We appreciate you too. <laughs> Um, and we absolutely do. And I will say on behalf of everyone at TLC, we truly are inspired by the work that the libraries are doing right now to reopen to their public and to um, bring their services to everyone. The stories that we're hearing, the levels of service, the cool uh, little anecdotals that people are doing. Uh, we may, we will touch on those later in a different webinar, but you know, as, as library users ourselves, we do appreciate the work you all are doing to bring, um, books and e-access to your borrowers. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this webinar. Uh, we do have a couple of webinars coming up in the future. If you go to our website, you'll notice that there are no descriptions there yet. Uh, we were actually um, planning on modifying some of our titles based on the session that we had today. Um, and we are going to be playing off these as we move into the future. Um, over the next couple of weeks, you're going to see us do a library.solution demonstration based on some of the features that you saw in today's webinar. Um, we have a webinar coming up talking about UX, um, user experience, design, and software for libraries. Uh, we will also be doing a panel uh, roundtable discussion on reopening libraries. So we do have quite a few topics coming on down the pike. Everybody that is registered today will get an email on letting them know when new topics are there. Uh, I do want to thank everyone for joining us today on Webinar Wednesday. Please stay safe and healthy out there. I always say this, please wash your hands, even though you should have been doing this before COVID, um, but that's okay. Uh, just start doing it now if you weren't, and everybody have a healthy, wonderful day. Thank you very much.